What's up everybody, it's the homie Truth Teller, the street reporter, and a lot of people are always asking me about Chief Keith. I told you that. For some reason, since they know I'm a street reporter, they keep asking me about Keith and um, Blood Money, Big Glow, aka Mario Hess. Uh, he ended up losing his life in Chicago. You know, I've been studying the drill culture for a while, and this rap shit get wild. But I noticed when I looked at Blood Money case, uh, his looked at a little suspicious. It was different from the rest of the guys that I didn't broke down. You know, the rest of the guys was into the beef and this and the ops, the ops catch it, fuck you up, you see it on the internet. I didn't get that feel from Blood Money. Uh, I called it a different feel for Blood Money, so we gonna break this down. So we gonna go, first thing I noticed was Blood Money was the cousin of Chief Keith. So we gonna go Blood Money, Blood Money, is Keith cousin. I noticed this, okay? These are the first things I noticed. So I said instantly that he must have some of Chief Keith ops. That's one of the first things that came to my mind. Might sound crazy, but I said he must got some of Keith ops plus his own ops, you know? Uh, he not even from the same block as Chief Keith. I noticed that. Another thing I noticed was he looked it a little older than the rest of them. So I did my research and realized he was in his 30s, okay? Okay? I noticed that he was in his 30s, so he was years ahead of Chief Keep. He was older. And I noticed that he used to talk about some of the things he did in interviews, grimy shit, robberies, tough guy shit, bully shit. So I figured he had a lot of ops, okay? So Big Glow. Yeah, ops. But we all do, you know, and keep head ops. But I noticed that, so I didn't want to hold that back. Uh, another thing that I noticed about Big Glow was that he could rap real good. He sounded different than the rest of those guys. The rest of those guys is with the drill sound. Now, don't get me wrong, the drill was decent. You know, I come around, then I shoot him down, then I beat him down, then I grab a pound, then I went down, then I... That shit cool and all, you know, I'm not knocking it, but I noticed that Blood Money had bars with his shit. He can spit a little different. So I didn't find it surprising that he actually got a rap deal with Interscope. Interscope signed him, I guess looking for that Chief Keep vibe. So Blood Money, Blood Money signed the deal, okay? He was signed to Interscope. Okay? That's what I noticed. He was signed to Interscope for 50000 was his signing bonus. I don't know what the whole deal was worth, but they gave him 50000 up front. Now, I want you to pay close attention to this, okay? Because these are things that I noticed. Pay close attention to the 50 k I noticed he signed the rap deal for Chief Keith, okay? That was one of the first things that he had... Um, had me thrown off. I said, damn, the rest of those guys are just going with Chief Keith, but he signed a deal. Remember, Dirk wasn't part of the Glow Gang. Larice got him a deal with Def Jam, but everybody else just came with Chief Keith. But I noticed this guy got a rap deal, and it was in the headlines, the media, 50K up front. Cool. Um, this is the thing that threw me off. When I found out that he lost his life and he ended up getting killed, right? Uh, first off, people used to tell me Blood Money was like one of those dirty ass niggas. Then all of a sudden he got that deal and got to get flashy buying the leathers, the Nikes, the watches, the rings, okay? So I heard that he got real flashy, okay? Right? But who wouldn't, you know? You came from the gutter and finally got something you feel good about that shit. So when I found out that he died, I told myself, I said he must have been in the Ops neighborhood. No. I said he must have been at the grocery store or in a restaurant or somewhere loafing, lacking in an obscene thing he didn't notice. No. Oh, he must have been riding in his car through the block and somebody seen it and shot through that bitch. Blah, 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 blah. No. When I did my research, I seen that he was killed on, uh, I believe, the 5600 block of El Eliz Elizabeth, I believe. That's on the south side, okay? So he was killed on 5600 block 
or Elizabeth, okay? We're going to just say ELB, 5600 block of Elizabeth, okay? That's in Inglewood, okay? That is also the block where his family live at. So pay attention, his family live there. I say, what the fuck? Hold up, hold up. Uh, it was a drive-by. Somebody rolled past and shot him. I said, it must have been a drive-by. He on a block barbecue kicking it. No. This guy was shot 10 times. A family member of his was shot in the stomach, I believe, in somewhere else. So uh, someone else was shot with him. So someone else was shot with him, too. And then, when I kept to doing my homework, I noticed another thing, right? I said, okay, uh, this guy's in front of his family, right? And he gets shot 10 times, and a person, another person gets shot 10 times. I say, it sounds close. It sounds like they know this person. This sounds like a, you know, this just feels 10 times is a lot of shot. This feels like a get back, you know? But in his neighborhood, what threw me off, I say, what the fuck? So I talked to a lot of people close to Blood Money. I actually had a chance to interview uh, his wife. Um, but after we did the interview, she told me things in the interview that's kind of wild. So they contacted me and told me uh, to edit certain things out the interview. And I said I wasn't going to do that. So they told me, well, if you're not going to edit the interview or whatever like that, then um, we want to see the interview first for you drop it. And I let them know, look, man, I'll let you do that. But uh, you guys can't dictate my platform. So we went back and forth. And since it was an issue, I decided to never release it. I'm not going to let no one come on We Are The Truth Tellers or Truth Teller TV and dictate how my platform going to go. So it wasn't released. But um, talking to her, I heard some things in the interview that she was telling me, you know, that... Um, he really loved his neighborhood. He loved the area. He loved his people. He was from around them. So when I do my breakdown, my conclusion, when I looked at all of this, I said, okay, he was signing in the scope. He got 50,000. Heard he was flashy. He was stunning in the hood. He was killed on the block that his family lived on. He was 30-some years old living in that neighborhood. Nobody never did shit to him. Then all of a sudden, Two weeks after getting this, because he was killed two weeks after getting this money. Two weeks after getting, two weeks after getting that 50K, he lost his life, okay? Then he was shot 10 times when he lost his life, and someone else was shot. So when I do my breakdown and my conclusion, what I think happened to blood money is, I believe people were salty at blood money. I believe people was jealous of blood money. I believe blood money had a lot of money around this time and nobody else had money. And he was in the neighborhood flashing money, wearing gold chains, watches. I think the neighborhood started developing a dislike against this guy and he didn't notice. He didn't realize that he should have got the fuck out that neighborhood. It wasn't safe enough anymore. I feel like blood money was targeted by people in his neighborhood. Now I'm not saying he never did nothing to nobody. I ain't saying he didn't, you know, get karma that came back to him for past shit that he did. Remember, I wasn't there. But when I look at this board, first thing come to my mind is jealousy. It seems like people in the neighborhood had a thing against him and maybe he didn't notice it because he was blinded by his career and this rap shit that was going on. And then the crazy part about this is after I did the research and I went to certain things on YouTube, I see that his family feels the same exact way as I'm saying. You get a chance, you go type in blood money death news and they're going to tell you the same thing that I'm saying. When I looked at this shit, I said, I believe he was targeted because he made it. You know, he was around a lot of people with money and they didn't have money. And I just think, you know, he probably got out of place. And that's in my opinion. It's a lot of rumors that K.I. hawked him down. I hear that too on the internet. It's a lot of rumors about people in Lamron and Chief Keith set him up and sacrificed them and all kind of weird shit, right? 
I don't believe that. I believe he was targeted by people in his neighborhood, and I believe people in the neighborhood know exactly who did this, but there's some street shit, and street shit stay in the streets. I don't think a rapper did this, because if it was, the internet has a way of making stories about it. I think blood money death is never going to be solved, because um, this is not one of those things where somebody want to rap about doing it. No, they want to keep this a secret so they never go to jail, which make me believe that this was some street shit, and it's going to stay some street shit. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me to break down. Um, I don't want to say that because y'all want me to do that. I need a little more information before I do that breakdown. But uh, I want you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Leave me a comment. Let me know what should I break down next. You want to know about a neighborhood, uh, a street shit, a murder, a death, anything. My boy, my boy breaking down. A street shit, a murder, a death. Anything going on in the community that you think I can give you a better insight about it? Okay, fuck it, I'm going to tell you. A lot of people want me to break down what happened to Big Law. I'm not sure if you know who that is. That's a guy who uh, was like a leader over the Black Disciples Nation and got out of prison and then ended up losing his life. A lot of people on the South Side know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, if that's the next story you want me to break down, then I need a thousand likes on this video. You give me a thousand likes and I'm going to kind of break that whole situation down for you. Remember, I don't need no donations. Keep your money to yourself. It's rough out here. The pandemic coming. You might need that little extra change to do something for your family. What you can do for me is just hit the like button. When you do that, it make my videos grow and a lot of people be able to see them. I appreciate the love. It's the homie Truth Teller, the street reporter.